Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. St. Mark's is a historic congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. We are conveniently located in Myers Park on Queens Road, just south of Charlotte's Uptown and adjacent to the Duke Mansion and the greenery of Edge Hill Park. St. Mark's Church building is easy to find with its marble Christus Victor, while inside, the mid-century design of the sanctuary reaches upward, inspiring us with Christ's blessing and beautiful stained glass windows featuring all the people of God in all their diversity. There is a place for you at St. Mark's. stand as we're ready.
morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church on this the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. In today's gospel reading, Jesus transformed the deep waters of Peter's life into a place of mission and grace. Today we hear again God's call to each of us, whom shall I send? May we respond, here I am, Lord, send me. A warm welcome to any and all who are visiting this morning and worshiping with us. Your presence among us is a blessing to us. Today we will have a temple talk on the Super Bowl of Caring. Perhaps you noticed some boxes out in the gathering place decorated with the two teams for the Super Bowl next week. Um, because we can't have the usual Super Bowl of Caring in which we have kind of have a potluck of soups as a fundraiser for uh, hunger in our community. We're gathering food that can be distributed through loaves and fishes. Please support this work of our young people. Also like to make an announcement that uh, one month from today, the 8.30 service, the contemporary service, will be regathering at 8.30 beginning um, on March 6th in the main sanctuary. If that's a worship time that appeals to you, please join us. We'll be learning a little bit of new music and a new musical setting from Augsburg Fortress's All Creation Sing. And if you're interested, if you're a, a guy and you're interested in being part of a renewed men's group at St. Mark's, please see either the pastor or John Simon about um, how we might get a new or a renewed men's group off the ground at St. Mark's. I have a word of, 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 of a sad word that um, the son of Mary Lou and Dale Hopp, Stephen, whom we've been remembering in prayer for many months, passed away this past week. Please remember the Hobb family in your prayers and we'll be remembering Stephen's life in the prayers of the church this morning. I'd like to ask the congregation to um, continue to, we continue to wear masks and I thank you all for continuing to wear masks during worship so that we can do what we can as a congregation to help our world get through this pandemic. Finally, for those of you who are joining us online, if you've never been to St. Mark's before, please call us or email us or come to worship on Sunday morning that we might be able to get to know you. Let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Remembering the waters of holy baptism, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made it to confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, Jonathan.
you, you guys have a football again? You're, you're up to this again no. on Sunday morning? No, we did that. Uh, we did that yesterday. Oh, you're playing football in the sanctuary yesterday. Yes. Yeah. And we just wanted to get that. As long as you're not playing frisbee golf with the fire. No. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. No, 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 no. No. Uh, today, I just wanted to uh, remind the congregation that the Super Bowl of Caring is going on, and the boxes are out in the gathering space. Please put your non-perishable goods. <clears throat> excuse me. In whichever the box of whichever team you think is going to win. Right now, it looks like the Bengals uh, is the favored team. Um, is that Miss Gins saying yeah? Mike, that's um, a different opinion. Yeah, I think so. Um, so please uh, do that, and uh, these cans will go to people who, you know, are still struggling to eat uh, and who uh, need our help. Uh, so between this week and next week. Please do that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan, Michael. And how long you guys been shot on this conference uh, not, not in the sanctuary, guys. <laughs> the service continues with the Office of the Word. The first reading is from the sixth chapter of the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you 
Fast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. I will not doubt what your The second reading is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, and have, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And when they had filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and 
all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning. In all of the Gospels, the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias, figures prominently in Jesus' travels, in his teaching, and in his mission toward the world. In today's Gospel, this lake is also called the Lake of Gennesaret. This large body of water is a large lake, and like many bodies of water, forms a natural boundary or a border. This lake has a surface area of, it's called a sea it's sometimes in the, in the Bible, but it's a large lake. It has a surface area of 64 square miles, or 166 square kilometers. Its maximum depth, depth is 157 feet, or 48 meters. In more recent times, from 1948 to 1967, this, the Lake of Gennesaret was the northern border with Syria. The lake is large enough that in antiquity, rather than walking around it, people found it more time efficient to travel across it by boat. And to this day, throughout all seasons of the year, the Lake of Gennesaret or the Sea of Galilee continues to support a fishing economy throughout the year. Therefore, it should not surprise us that this lake figures prominently into each of the gospel narratives because this lake is that boundary or border across which Jesus crosses multiple times to reach the other side and to release people who are sick or captive to evil spirits. It is a lake that has storms, and in today's gospel, it is also the site of Jesus calling his first disciples and the great catch of fish. So today's gospel begins as Jesus was standing by the shore of the lake with people pressing in upon him. And as I have always read this, I imagine him sort of backing up and his ankles are in the water and he's backing up further. And so he sees the boat that the fishermen have only recently gotten out of and asked to be put out from the shore in one of the boats so he can teach the crowd. And as he was teaching, perhaps he noticed that the fishermen were not only washing their nets, but they, they had no fish. They had caught no fish, a sign that they had worked all night for no catch. So when Jesus finished teaching the crowd, he must have surprised the fishermen because he suddenly said to them, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. This unusual rabbi, Jesus, must have surprised Simon Peter because with a note of exasperation, as I read the text, Peter says, Master, we've worked all night long and have caught nothing. But if you say so, a nod, nod, wink, wink, we'll put the nets out. The story is so well known that it has been the subject of countless paintings that are in galleries around the world or that have been woven into tapestries. What's interesting about today's story is Peter's great confession of his own sinfulness after encountering this miraculous catch of fish. This story is both a story about Jesus calling his first disciples, but it's really got a mini parable inside of it, a parable about fishing in deep water. The deep water of the lake is both the place of a miraculous catch of fish and it's also the place of Simon's transformation into a disciple of Jesus. When Simon Peter saw the amount of fish, he fell to his knees and said, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Now what could have made Simon Peter say 
this. He was, of course, an experienced fisherman. He knew this lake and how to fish. And he also probably knew that on some days you can fish all night and not catch anything. And the best thing to do is to return to shore and go home and continue the day with other projects. He had fished all night, caught nothing. And yet here was a man catching enough fish in broad daylight to nearly sink two boats. So seeing this great catch of fish, Simon Peter seemed genuinely afraid of Jesus. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people, not fish, but people. For this phrase, catching people, to make any sense, I think it's important to notice the place that this miracle and these words happen, where the catching or fishing occurs in the deep waters of the lake of Gennesaret. After all, Jesus encountered Simon Peter in the deep water of Peter's life. Peter was both blessed and grasped by Jesus at that sacred boundary of water, the deep water. Peter's whole livelihood was centered around this lake and the deep waters of that lake that provided fish that supported he and his family. The deep water was both the place of Peter's livelihood and at the same time the place of his anxiety and worries about his life and livelihood. The lake and its deep water was a reality for Simon Peter. And I think the image of deep water is also a reality us. We too live and work in the deep waters of life. To say it another way, all of us are in the deep end of the pool, so to speak. We're all living our lives sometimes feeling as if we're up to our necks in it and sometimes feeling as if we're drowning a bit or trying to stay afloat in our world that has changed so rapidly in the past couple of years. We may not actually be fishing in a boat, but the miracle of Jesus' presence continues to offer hope to us in the deep waters, the anxious waters of our lives. Jesus continues to come to us as he did to Simon Peter, James, and John in the complexities, difficulties, and contradictions of our lives so that we might find blessing, renewal, and so that we might be able to help others. All the people in today's readings encounter God in the complexity and deepness of their lives. You know, all of you know that I, I taught for years at a seminary and college, and I got 90 minutes to, to teach for one period, and I won't turn this in, into a 90-minute sermon. But there is enough in all of these texts to easily talk for 90 minutes about Isaiah, saying, I am the least of the apostles. And yet Paul was the greatest of all the first missionaries. And yet his humility before Jesus as one who has, has persecuted his church. Yet this morning we'll, we'll look primarily at Simon Peter. But in Isaiah, which we heard about just a moment ago as Karen read the text from Isaiah, Isaiah encountered God in the sacred deepness of the temple, realizing that he was in the presence of God he also understood how incomplete and how sinful he was as a person. His own sinfulness was so profound that he said those words that all of us have heard many times. Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. I think all of us can understand this. No matter which side of the aisle we sit on every day, all of us are surrounded by people who say one thing and do another, a, a land of people of unclean lips. All of us are familiar with the difficulty of navigating the deep waters of our human life. Paul also wrote about being out of his death, writing last of all as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the 
church of God. Imagine Paul, the first and greatest of the early missionaries of the church, the one who planted churches in so many places. Imagine the burden. He kind of tilts his hand a little bit here, letting us know that he realized every day the burden he was carrying as a forgiven person, one who had persecuted the church that he was now attempting to build up. He spoke only of God's greatness, God's grace dwelling within him that allowed him to do this. So we should not perhaps be surprised at Simon Peter being unmasked before Jesus as a sinful man in deep waters of his own life confessed his sinfulness to Jesus. Isaiah, Paul, and Simon Peter were encountered by God's grace in the deepness of their lives, those deep waters of anxiety, sin, and brokenness. And each of them responded by being sent out to serve God. I think that's what we do on Sunday morning when we come to church. Each of us come into church for a bit of renewal, time away from those waters of life, or perhaps we carry them into the sanctuary and seek forgiveness from God. To be sent out again after worship in mission. To be sent out to become fishers of people. In order to do that, we first experience God's grace. God's grace that frees us and says, you are my child. My grace dwells within you. God comes to us when we feel lost, unclean, drowning in life. You know, very few of us travel any significant distance by boat anymore. Most of us cross the vast boundaries of the sea by air these days. As a missionary, I was aware every time I flew over the Pacific of that deep body of water that I was crossing with, with ease that so many missionaries before me had crossed by boat taken weeks. God sends, God continues to send God's church into the world to be in mission in the deep waters of human life. After Isaiah was encountered by God's grace and forgiveness, he heard God's voice in the temple saying, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And he replied, here am I, send God's mission begins with the deep water encounter of one's own brokenness and being renewed by God and then sent out from this place again so that we might serve others. The Christian journey begins in the deep waters of baptism that forgive and join us to Christ's church. Baptism is not a private event. It is the first step in which God sends us into the world as part of Christ's body, the church. Baptism teaches us to expect miracles in water. One of the oldest images of the church is of a ship sailing through the world across the seas of life, fishing for and catching people, saving people who are drowning in life. And if you look up at our sanctuary here in the church, you still see a bit of that image of the bow of a ship, the nave. And we call this section of the church the nave, the ship, as an image, a reminder that this church sails through the world seeking to rescue and lift out of the water those who have been overcome by the deep water of life. This Sunday and next Sunday is Jonathan and Michael playfully uh, told us earlier this morning. We are invited to bring gifts of food for the hungry in our community. Each week, this congregation is a living sign of hope in life's deep waters in our community as we feed the hungry and the homeless and as we collect food to distribute to those who are in need. This congregation in so many ways has a servant's heart that seeks to help others who are either lost or who are experiencing difficulty in life's deep waters. This congregation reaches out to the imprisoned with signs of Christ's love. This congregation has been and will continue to be in the future a shelter for room in the inn 
for people who need shelter during the coldest weeks of the year. This church and its members seek to help others in the deep waters of their lives because each of us have already been encountered by Christ and know forgiveness and grace. At those moments of our lives when we have felt very much out of our depth or when we have very much wronged someone else and have been in need of forgiveness, we know that Jesus has transformed the deep water of our lives place of salvation and hope so that we can now live with hope for others. When Simon Peter, James, and John had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. Our world continues to be a place of deep water, anxiety, and suffering. Our world continues to need people who can reach out and help others who are in water of life. God continues to ask each of us, whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? May we each week, as we depart from this sanctuary and walk out of those doors into the entrance to mission, may we respond, here am I, Lord, send me. Oh Lord, send me out again this week into life's deep water so that I
please stand as you were able. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us be together. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Sending God, equip your church with gifts of the Spirit to proclaim the good news that through the love and grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and sent to serve others. Continue to send us out this day and every day as apostles sharing the hope of your salvation to an anxious and broken world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Caring Lord of creation, it is as simple as a view out of an office window, seeing and hearing a tiny bird sitting on a fence post, just singing to its heart's content. This is only a glimpse of God's creation in which we have been entrusted to care for it all as you have from the teeniest microorganisms to the largest mammals, trees, and all that exists on this earth, as well as the cosmos. With God's guidance, the impact humans have on the creation needs to be positive, helpful, and have the utmost consideration to the fact that everything is connected and works in concert together with every other living part. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Lord of love over all humanity, instill in the hearts of our national political leaders and all world leaders the guidance of grace-filled, peaceful, and compassionate approaches to major issues facing their countries and the world at large. Help them all to govern and continue awareness of the best interest of the people that they lead and how their actions affect all humanity. The most difficult task given to us by Jesus is for one human to love another. With this most important foundation of love, we must always consider if we have shown the ultimate love to one another in all decisions that affect the greater good of all with peace and compassion. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Forgiving God, your steadfast love endures forever and you do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. We ask your blessing upon doctors and nurses, social workers, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are anxious, frightened, sick, or grieving. Be with and heal our church family. We remember Jay, David, Charlie, Virginia, Joseph, Robert, Rachel, Danielle, Carl, Jeff, Mary Lou, Paul, Jimmy, Doris, Rona, David, Carol, Debbie, Van, Shirley, <coughs> Diane, Ron, Lois, Amanda, Judy, Hunter, Sarah, Mindy, Steve, Oakley, Stanley, Connie, Louise, George, and the residents of Matthews Glen. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Lord of grace and salvation, create in us the loving ability to see beyond the faults and flaws and outward characteristics humanity deems as less than good or acceptable. 
Jesus accepted each person he encountered with the gratefulness of their worth, even though they did not realize it or see this value for themselves. His greatest sacrifice unfolded as planned to be salvation for everyone, not just then, but for all times. By his grace, we all have been saved and forgiven. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we live in the hope of sharing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We offer you thanks for the life and witness of Stephen Haas, son of Dale and Mary Lou Haas, who passed into eternal life last Thursday. Welcome Stephen into the blessedness of your eternal kingdom, and may he share in the inheritance of the saints in life. Strengthen and comfort the extended Hop family with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of Christ Jesus. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is enough for you, and enough for all.
Please stand as you were able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive the sending blessing. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you for joining us online for worship today at St. Mark's Lutheran Church. You're welcome to join us for worship in person on Sundays at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. St. Mark's is a congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. Please join us for worship and stay with us to serve Jesus Christ, helping others discover God's amazing grace. For more information about worship and service opportunities, please visit us at stmarkscharlotte.org. There is a place for you at St. Mark's. May the peace of Christ be with you.